Welcome everyone. I am Nicole Taylor, your host, and this is Healing Through Experience. I have a very special guest and friend today. Her name is Michelle Portier. She is the founder and everything of Healing Women uh, Nations of Northeast Florida. It's a 501c organization on meeting the needs of women, uh, women veterans that have experienced domestic and sexual assault, mental illness, secondary to trauma, and or post-traumatic uh, stress, which we know is PT, a lot of PTSD, um, from military because she was in the military. So she just goes out and helps women heal. She's helped me heal. She prays for me. She does all things for all people. I love her immensely. And I felt that she could really talk on the topic of a lot of things that she already does. One of those topics is healing from the inside out, which I believe everybody should. We don't always do it. And I think partly it's because we don't know where to start. We weren't given a playbook to do that. You know, we kind of just tread along and maybe take a few things from look people that we hear, but we don't have a real strategy uh, into understanding how that is and how to start. I've done my own healing from the inside out, and it's a continuous journey, as I'm sure Michelle will um, say as well, but I want to invite her so she can talk to us. So welcome, Michelle. Thank you so much for your time. How are you today? I am doing awesome absolutely awesome i first want to say nicole thank you so much for um inviting me on to to grace your platform i'm so appreciative of it and thank you for that wonderful intro i will do my best to kind of live up to it <laughs> and i'm just honored to be here today yeah <laughs> thank Good. you you do live up to it every time she has you know a women's group that she empowers she has a safe space for women it's like you know there's things that are out there that people are doing but this is it's, it's to me it's unique because i've experienced it myself um it's very very unique and the ability and the the blessing that you have to be able to touch people in the way that you do so i had to do this and as i'm building you know this new platform for myself i'm bringing in experts in areas i i'm like i know so many experts like okay god this is what i'm supposed to do let's bring it to the nation Right. You know, I'm, I've had my own, I'm, you know, healing through experiences. I have my own journey with that, but continuing that. So I want to know when you speak to women or people in general, because I know you speak to any and everyone about what you do, right. what you've right. gone through in your life. What is your definition of healing from the inside out? Okay. Okay. So my definition, before I get into that, I want to say that it's just so interesting how um, our missions parallel in the vision, healing through experiences, healing women, healing nations in Northeast Florida. It's not by chance that um, God has connected us, you know, and um, for those that are on the path to healing and maybe don't even know that, realize that they need healing, um, just understand this, that it's not something that you ever arrive at. You know, healing is a journey and recovery is a journey. It's not a destination. That's the first thing. Um, my definition of healing from the inside out is first and foremost, you know, on this journey called life, we all experience things, we go through things, you know, we've experienced heartache, we've experienced disappointments, grief, pain, trauma, betrayal, et cetera. It's run the gamut. We've experienced all of that at some point. But the thing is, each time we encounter that and we feel like we can't bear it, what do we do? Do. We do one of two things or three things. We, we become numb, you know, we become emotional eaters, we become shopaholics, we become alcoholics, you know, we use drugs. And I say we just in general, prescribed or street drugs, but it's all aimed at forgetting or avoiding pain. And pain is a part of life, but we have been um, in this. In, in society, we have been programmed to avoid or run from pain. Mm -hmm. And so many, often we don't even understand what we're running from. And we just don't know that we need the healing. So my definition of healing is 
identifying and confronting the thing that has become so deeply embedded within your heart because that's where we hold you know our emotions um and our emotions can lead us astray you know and it and it skews the way that we perceive and receive life because of the things that have become so embedded within our heart that we can't even trace the root of it and so my definition of healing is identifying and getting to the root of the thing that is so deeply hidden within our hearts that it affects the way that we perceive love and the way that we receive life or, or receive perceive life and receive love and so that is my definition of healing from the inside out finding the root dealing with the root allowing ourselves to go through the process and it's going to be a painful process because it's rooted in an emotion and emotions are meant to be expressed not suppressed but society has taught us to suppress and we can only do that for so long because our body holds the memories of whatever it is that we encountered that we bury and we act according to that agreed agreed i, I couldn't have said it better myself um you're so right and one incident for me where it's root cause that is like the basis of what healing through experiences was or and is for me mm -hmm. and um i remember when i injured my knee uh doing too much working out and i oh. the doctor told me oh we can go in and you know you, you can do some surgery or whatever and i'm like okay um, and my thing was how much downtime was I going to have because I was going to Mexico in like right. a few weeks and nobody is stopping me from my water, but, and he's like, Oh no, you'll be back on there. And I'm like, okay. When the lady, the nurse comes in and I had like some, some severe pain and she wanted to get me, give me uh, the cortisone shot. Mm -hmm. And I literally yelled at the lady. I was like, get that away from me. I'm not having that. So she was like, Oh, it'll help with your pain. I said, I don't want to mask my pain. Exactly. I, and I literally, the lady, and I, I was so sorry that I scared us. So I don't want to mask my pain. I said, what you're giving me is a band-aid. I need to understand what's going what on is. in my knee. I want to, and I told, literally told her, I want to feel what's happening mm -hmm. so then I can adjust accordingly. Right. Lady left, never came back. Um, but it goes to what you're saying, finding out the root cause of what's going on, as painful as it possibly is, whether you've gone through sexual trauma, just mental trauma, you know, uh, you know, physical abuse, emotional abuse, which I've experienced myself also. And that's it's like challenging to heal from, you know, the, the exactly. mental psychological, that's that's more damaging to me, I believe, right. than physical. I girl. I feel. That's what, oh, see, see, this is why we, we are here because I will tell you, I, and, and for me, I was in a domestic, well, I was in a domestic violence situation. I didn't know I was in. Right. No, it wasn't till, and it wasn't anything physical. It was all uh, verbal and emotional. And I didn't know that it was happening to me because it eats away little by little. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until there was more outward projection mm -hmm. from, you know, from the person that I was like, something like literally, um, and I'm going to say it was God, told mm -hmm. me to look up the definition, you know, online. And I read, I went to the domestic violence um, website and it's, you know, had all of the symptoms of you've experienced this and it had a long list. And I was like, everything short of hitting me is on this list. And I'm at work watching, okay. reading this. And I just cried. And I'm like, oh my God, because I'm, I'm cool as a fan. You know what I mean? I'm of pretty course. happy. I like, I like people around me. I, you know, I love positivity. So I was like, and I knew he had an anger, anger issue. And I felt no. to me, I'm cool. There's nothing that you need to do to, to bring that on me. You keep that right. out there. But he wasn't dealing with what he had to deal with inside. His own so, stuff, yeah. Right. And from that point on, I was like, yeah, I, I, have, I had some healing to do. And yeah. I didn't understand why I was attracting that. It was because I knew that I, was, I like to help people. So I yeah. saw it as a project or whatever. But how many projects have we taken on that, you know, were meant to be, uh, exactly. weren't meant to be, but we took them on. Exactly. Know? So I had to get rid of that. I had to get rid of that, you know, get rid of that and really get down to the basics of who Nicole was. And it took me about three years to do that. 
you know, <laughs> when I can, when I can quantify it, I'm like, yeah, about three years where I actually kind of felt comfortable. Um, but it had, I had to do some serious, serious work and it I didn't work. talk to anybody. Yeah. I didn't talk to anybody. Like my, my, my family knew a little bit, but they didn't know the extent of it. Um, cause I was like, I don't need anybody to go to jail, but I, you know, and I felt like I'm like, I needed to handle this myself. I, I got myself in this. I got to get myself out some way. And yeah, I and why did you take that on? Because, you know, um, and I don't like victims, but survivors often take that on. I, you know, I'm a survivor too, but we often yeah. take that stance. Like, I got myself into this. I got to get myself out. Or I'm ashamed or embarrassed. To get, especially if, you know, your friends or family were trying to tell you and you didn't see it. Um, yeah. I just, I don't, I don't, that's one thing that baffles me to this day like why we feel like we have to take that on like mm -hmm. I did this I got myself into this I gotta get myself out and no, I think it's hard it's, because we know we have our own choices yeah that just and, came to me choices and not just choices but they see you coming they see us coming they yeah. see the, the goodness the, the pureness the purity in our hearts they see it they prey on it they can smell it you know mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. sense it yeah yeah, and it leaves you in this vulnerable position after the storm has passed, you know? I know that's how I felt in certain instances, but understanding that root cause and why I'm doing this, it, it, it had a lot to do with me Yeah, that I wasn't facing, and it I didn't know, <laughs> you know? I, I, didn't, I didn't know, I didn't realize, and a lot of times when we go through something, we feel like, oh, I feel I'm, I'm better now with that yeah no you're not always you still have to you have to go deep and when i say you have to like be the onion and peel those layers however layers. long it takes yeah. because we have some layers we are a complex people of you know with years of experience depending on how long you've been on this earth so far but it and starts at you know from birth it's i think it starts you know in utero you know, a lot of studies would would show, you know, this. And we carry generational things too. You know, yes, generational trauma, generational pain. Um, yep. Yep. And so, so it's like, how do we, what do we do with that? And I know my cousin, as my, as we call each other, our, my sister cousin, you know, we are working to do a lot of inner work on ourselves individually and collectively. Like we're in our forties. I grew up with this girl. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're just now coming together to to talk about these things. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, but the beauty of it is, is that you start somewhere. And so the talking that's is the healing. The talking the, is the, healing. the talking is the, and, and that's why I, I, I needed you on here because you have, you're giving me, I'm like, I'm, I'm tingling all over. Um, <laughs> I, I am, you know, so I know, I'm, I know it's getting good. Right, um, right. You have this ability when, I mean, your voice is just very soothing and calming when you are praying, la ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dogs and cats and whatever. <laughs> it is so powerful. I asked this lady to pray for me and the prayer, I mean, I was just like, oh my gosh, you know? it's very healing. So it's a testament to what you can do and what you do every single day for people. Well, you know, so I have I, to have you. Thank you. Well, you know, I finally embraced and started running from the fact that I, I am a healer, you know, through word, touch, and presence. And I ran from that for a long time because I was like, Abba, Father, I need healing. Right. How are you going to call me? Who, who am I to heal? <laughs> me and all my jacked up self. But, you know, that's when, you know, he, he downloaded healing is a journey. Yeah. It's not a, not a destination. And you are the most qualified to heal because you've had the experience. Yes. Right. So, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Right. Because we're still, like you said, it's a journey. So you're taking the journey with people. Right. You know, it's like, you know, you, you've, um, you've sewn up some areas in your life pretty well, right? right? But you still have some, it's not all the way done because the, even when you sew something, there's still holes in there that right. you have to, you know, that's not as airtight as we'd like them to be, but that's the experience you help, that you use to help other people. This so you said to me, and you know, and, and I don't share this with people a lot, but this is the word that God spoke directly to me. He said, 
as you go, as you heal others, I will heal you. Yes. And that is so true. On this earth for. You know, we're on this, we're not on this earth for ourselves. We're, you know, we're on this earth to draw all men unto him. And how do we do that? Mm -hmm. you know, by the things that we encounter, the things that we endure, and we help others along that path based on our experiences. So. Mm -hmm. I and just, that's, that's the whole premise. You know, I say, you know, I know a little bit about a lot. Um, I am a, I am able to help people in areas of their life because I too have walked a certain path. I haven't walked directly in your shoes, but I've walked in parallel in a lot of different areas and I can give, and I, I, I'm owning it now because I didn't own it before. I'm right. able to give an insight that may help you ch should you choose to accept that mission right. in your own healing and then you pay it forward. You know, right. I've had a lot of people around me, including you that have, you know, given me the courage to be like, Nicole, step into what you're supposed to. And I'm still having a problem with it. Like this whole podcast and everything is totally new for me, but I'm like, move forward, step into it. Why do you feel that you, you're not worthy to be able to do these types of things? And it's like, this is part of my own healing journey. Um, and it's part of the things that I've looked inside myself, which is what we're, we're talking about today, owning it. You know, and you said something that was crucial, that word worthy, because, mm -hmm. because of the trauma and the abuse and things like that, um, our sense of worthiness was destroyed. And so yeah. if, if, if you don't have a sense of who you are and that you are worthy. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah, and so that's a great segue. So how do we begin? How do we begin to start to heal with, from within? I'd like you to give a few steps in what we should do. Well, first and foremost, um, you have to acknowledge your pain. Um, we can't, there's no way around it. Once you've identified that something is wrong and, some, and nothing that you tried is working, you have to be able to sit still and face yourself. So, you know, no distractions with all the many distractions we have in, in this world today. You know, eliminate the noise so that you can really get quiet and really tune in to what is askew within. And so part of the, the, the process of doing that is Eliminating the distractions. So turn off the phones, turn off the television, turn off the music, go in a room with a mirror. And I know it may sound simple, but you sit with yourself completely bare, completely naked, and you look in the mirror and begin to really see yourself, not through the eyes of what others have said to you that you are or the expectations that others have put on you, but look at you. Because until you become aware and reconnect with the awareness of who you, it's self-discovery. Like, who am I? Separate and apart from all of these things that I've encountered, separate and apart from the titles that I wear, if it's, if it's wife, if it's girlfriend, if it's sister, if it's mother, if it's leader, whatever the title you, aside from that, who am I? And then whatever comes, you have to sit with that. You know how hard it is for yeah. people, women, to sit in the mirror and look at themselves and look in the eye without looking away? Yeah, especially I'm very, if, especially I've done if it. If come up. Yeah, especially if something comes up that doesn't feel good. Yep. But I challenge you and I, I challenge you to just stick with it. Maintain the eye contact. Whatever emotions come up, experience them. If the tears come, let them come because if you continue to stare long enough those tears will turn into laughter and you won't even know why <laughs> but then you begin to get the impression you'll get images that come before you things that you might not have remembered that you buried and these images will come forward and then you know begin to journal what you what you see what you feel because the pain has to come to the surface and then you have to process it out you have to purge it from you you can't just let it come up and just, and just sit there because you'll be in a constant state of turmoil. You know, you'll be unsettled. So once it comes up, then we have to find a way to release it. Yes. Because we've been holding, holding that. And when we hold that in our body for however long, you know what it manifests like as? Um, 
physical symptoms, headaches, stomach aches, diseases, um, because our body is holding the pain. So first and foremost, the first step to beginning the process of um, identifying and healing from the pain is to acknowledge the pain and then accept it. Acknowledge and accept, mm -hmm. not bemoaning how you got there, not trying to understand how did you get there, just accept it as it is. That's a good point. That's a really good point because we like to stay in there like, how did I get there? And then you, you get it, you know, you, you dig yourself deeper into that. Um, everything that you said, before I even knew you, I did that. So yeah. I'm up here like, oh my God, like, yeah, I did all of that. And it was painful. Like literally, I'm in my, my, my mirror in my bathroom just staring at myself, literally. And you are, at every single thing that you just said, Michelle, I did and it happened. Um, I was just like, and I've understood as like, if I can't be with, if I can't be with myself and stare at myself, how do I expect anybody else to do it with me? You know, um, the journaling, the, that's the less part of the release, which was for me. And it was absolutely amazing. But that's staring at, and, and I've, oh, I've told women to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Stare at yourself, girl. You know, learn who you are. Then start to learn. And to love, love who you are. Learn to love yourself because that's a process too. You know, that's a whole, and I, I remember one person I told, you know, she was, you know, we, we all become serial daters at some point in our life as women, um, myself included. And it wasn't until I stood still and gave myself the time to cleanse myself from the past the lover, you know, then I can move forward. And I said, take yourself out on a date. Well, I have to Good. say I went to the other extreme. I wasn't a serial dater. I went to the other extreme. I, I wouldn't entertain anybody. Mm, yeah, like, that yeah, happens Especially too. after my marriage, you know, because I was married for so long, 20 years. I didn't know how to date, first of all. <laughs> right, I right, right. So the right. few times I tried was enough for me. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. like, let me just focus on. <laughs> He's like, I can't. Because <laughs> I have a negative zero tolerance. You know, we all have a good side and a bad side. So right. I can't afford for Mickey to be showing up, especially with all the progress that I've made right now. All right. <laughs> I need Michelle to stay in the building. I need Nikki to stay where she Nikki's at. <laughs> there you go. They, yeah, and see and understand those personalities. You know, that's all a part of learning who you are and loving who you are. You know, like I said, take yourself out on a date. Make yourself a, your favorite drink. I don't care alcoholic or not, but do things for yourself that you. doesn't involve anybody. You and know, be comfortable in your own skin. You know, not yes. somebody's society standards of what we should look like, what we should feel like, what we should be. But yes. you, we are, mm -hmm. you are uniquely and fearfully made. You are, you know, God broke the mold when he made you. We are all different. We are all unique. So trying to be something that you're not, you are battling with who you were originally created to be. Mm -hmm. Right. Ooh. Yes. Say that again, Michelle, please. <laughs> you are battling with who you were originally created to be when you attempt to mimic something else rather than being the original that you were created to be. Wow. You're at, yes, yes. And, 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 um, <laughs> coming out of my shell, I can definitely attest to that. And even, yeah. you know, one of my spiritual advisors would be like, yeah, you're a hard nut to crack, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm like, really? I thought I was open. And, the, and what she's saying to me is like, yeah, you are not trusting yourself enough mm -hmm. to be who you uniquely are. You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, you, you, you taking those baby steps and you, you're good. You've created this nice mold, but you need to be more than what You've you created a great representative of who yes. are you. When, it yes. is okay. when is it going to be okay for you to be you? Yes. Unapologetically. Well, you know, not disrespectful or any, anything, but, you know, and when you're doing it unapologetically in the way you're supposed to do it, in the path you're supposed to walk, it's not going to be, I mean, so you may offend some people, but that's, you know, you can't please anybody, but it's okay because if you're walking the path that you were set on this earth to do by God, and you know, you have the support of everyone around you that's for you, now that's mm -hmm. another one, and you, you, you know, I'm like, I, I have a, a arsenal around me 
all the time. I was like, I got God, I got my angels, I got my ancestors, I got my earthly people, I got everything around me that's walking with me. I don't always, you know, ask for the help, but you know what yeah. I mean? Knowing, yeah. knowing, knowing that is super, super important for people to he's understand. He's always there, ready, waiting for us to ask, and then so he can step in. You know, he's a gentleman. You know, he's given us free will. Yeah. So we have to make yeah. the choice to be courageous enough to make the decision to really embrace who we were called to be. You know, and then the second step is, you know, you have to harness that hurt once you've acknowledged it. You have to harness it, embrace it, embrace the anger, embrace the hurt, embrace the fear, and channel it into something positive, you know, and extend some compassion. You know, there's a model that I use. Um, it's called the ACE model, something that was created under my Michelle Speaks. Acceptance, compassion. We already talked about acceptance, but compassion. Because we are so critical of ourselves. We're quick to extend compassion to others, but to ourselves, we don't extend that same compassion. So be gentle with yourself as you're harnessing the pain and embracing and walking through the process with the pain. Take Nurture yourself, whatever that looks like to you. So yeah. that compassion piece is, is important when you're harnessing that, that hurt or that pain or that trauma. It certainly, it certainly is. Uh, I, I love to nurture myself now. I love to do my self care now. Without guilt, um, without guilt, so without feeling guilty. Yeah, without feeling guilty, and don't care what. Like this is what I do. You know, before um, I became a kept woman, if you will. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, I have a fiance now, but when I was by myself. I was having pro Friday night parties by myself in my apartment. Like yep. that was my thing. And I would watch TV. I'd make my you know favorite foods or I'd get my favorite takeout. And I would have a ball with myself laughing hysterically. Like I had 15 people in the house and there's nobody in there but myself. Maybe pass out and wake up in the morning like, wow, that was a great party. But I had fun, you know, and that was me having fun by myself. Well, if you can enjoy your own company, then most definitely you can enjoy the company of someone else. Exactly. And, and, I, and I'm able, and I know that I'm able to do that better now than I've ever done it before because of those steps that I took to really sit with myself in the quiet. Mm -hmm. We don't like quiet, you know? I love, we love quiet. Noise. I love my love quiet now, but when we're I don't in like that noise. Mess, Yeah. And that I don't mess, like noise it. unless it's music or something. I don't like noise unless it's music or nature because it just yeah. it clogs the the it 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 um it clogs the 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 I can't even get the, get the word right now. It it no you're right. It clogs your thought pattern. It clogs you know your the the purity that's trying to come to you. It clogs your uh your your vision. It clogs, it clogs, it clogs your pathway to be yep. able to hear and receive the downfall yep. that's coming. Yep, when you have all of this noise around you, like, yeah, I used to have the noise. Now, girl, I love the, the power of peace and quiet. You know why it's, you don't have to have the noise anymore? Because you feel to the yeah. to the that you don't have to. Right. You know, people that have to be on the move all the time, people that have to have a lot of noise all the time is because they don't want to hear what is being said, what is being downloaded. Because they're not at a point where they're ready to 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 receive it. Yep. That's exactly. why healing is a process. Healing is a journey. It's not a destination. I firmly believe that we don't begin to get snippets of the things that have caused us pain and trauma or grief or whatever it is that we experience until we are ready to begin the process to work through it. That's why we suppress things. I, I I I definitely agree with that. Um, this <laughs> that's why you're gonna have to come back on because there's other layers to Michelle that she has amazing insight on direction and guidance for us. Um, and you know the show is is slated to not be so long, so we have those you know good information to take with us and carry with us through the day and you know those nuggets that we can share with other people so i thank you so much you will be on again because we have another topic with her um so very much. soon very very soon i thank you so 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 much because we can talk for hours and, and i know and, right? 
We can so, talk about it. And I was like, wait a minute. And I'm like, <laughs> in my back, I have my own timer in the back, like Nicole. Hey, remember you said you didn't want to have these these right, too long. Right. Right. You know, but it, it's it's such a good topic. And I think right now it's a good stopping point for people just to have that and sit with, you know, and, awesome. and, and I, and implement, implement, implementation is so important. You can listen to us and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I need you guys to implement and start with, with one thing. Just start you with gotta one thing. You got to process it. You got to, it's, yeah. it's not a quick process. It's not. It's not. So, Michelle, I thank you. Please tell them how they can follow you, um, where they can find you. Well, you can find me at www.michellespeaks with a Z, S P E A K Z dot com. All of my IG, YouTube, Twitter handles are, and Facebook handles are Michelle Speaks, M I C H E L L E S P E A K Z. Um, that is how you can find me. You can follow me. You can reach out to me if you have questions. Um, but I did want to leave a parting thought as if as you're on the journey to your healing, whether you've recognized it or not, I just want to say to you that you no longer have to allow your emotions to lead you astray. Um, never trust your tongue when your heart is broken or bitter. Mm. Hush until you're healed, especially when it comes to what you say about yourself amazing great ending thank you so much again we will talk soon we will have you back as much and as as needed uh she is also available if you wanted to uh contract her services so please yeah, go uh, and follow her sorry, guys. i am I'm, I'm a live coach but i'm also a speaker um um a, you know uh I'm just going to right there. I'm an author, you know, so if you want to read some of my writings, you know, you can find me on Amazon, Michelle Poitier, P-O-I-T-I-E-R. -I, -I, -E I forgot my last name. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I do all the time. But, right. uh, but thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Healing Through Experience. And as I like to say, good morning. Good morning. Good morning.